Hey, hey, uh, welcome to the episode 16 of Take It Easy. One sex. In today's episode, we have uh, an interview with uh, Jordan Brompton from My Energy. Uh, we're going to be talking about Zappy, electric uh, charging, and uh, running a renewables business in the UK. We have recorded this interview over Skype, so there might be some audio issues, uh, but I hope you forgive me for that. Uh, we didn't capture the uh, Jordan site, unfortunately. That's my fault. Without further ado, here's the interview. How did you start with the whole um, electric vehicle charging, or electric vehicles, you know? What was your first electric car? Um, so I, I'll i tell you a little bit how I got into the industry, because that's what got me into electric cars, really. Okay. Um, myself and Lee have been friends and colleagues for, and sorry, Lee's my business partner, just so you know. Um, and the MD of my energy, technical inventor, genius. I'll come on to him. Um, but we've been friends for like 10 years now. And I used to work for his previous company, which was a company called For Eco at the time. And um, they manufactured a product called the Emerson device. It was um, very similar to what our Eddie device, Eddie device does now. It diverts the surplus power to hot water. And we, was only, we only sold the one product. Um, we didn't have a variation of products. It was just the one. We sold 25,000 of them in the UK. And I was predominantly in the solar and renewable market. And I, I just, I love that space. I felt comfortable in that space. Um, but when the, um, we called it the solar coaster, when it hit its lowest point and the feeding tariffs were slashed, everybody went out of business overnight and um, directors wanted to go the separate ways. So it forced the company into um, voluntary insolvency. So me and Lee parted ways slightly momentar momentarily. I went off and did my own thing in cycling, very random, fell into it. Um, but I set up a distribution business with a French friend who had all these contacts over in France and brands that wanted to bring them over to the UK. And Lee went off and, you know, dealt with his insolvency and his partnerships and then had a bit of a break and a breather. And um, a year or two later, tapped me on the shoulder once everything had settled down and said, I want to start back up in this industry. Are you, are you interested? And at the time, he had a leaf and it was the first time I'd ever seen one. So this would have been in early 2016. Obviously, I'd seen electric cars, but I'll be honest, I'd not paid much attention to it, not been in one. You know, I was into the cycling. I was just not bothered. I'd not, I'd not really knew, I didn't know anything about it. Um, so, that was the, my first experience with a leaf was with an electric car was Lee's leaf. Um, and he, he spoke about that. He wanted to get back into the industry. He, he got this idea of this product, which was like a third generation of the Eddie product. So a bit more sophisticated dealing with three phase and diverting power. And we, we built it specifically for the German market. So I jumped at the chance to join forces with Lee, just me and him, because I didn't ever want to leave the industry. So I packed up everything with the cycling. I did that for a couple of years, sold my shares, moved on and just focused everything into the new company, which we ended up calling My Energy. Um, and when he told me about the car charger idea, um, I just got super excited because I've always loved cars. I like fast cars in particular. <laughs> I'm, um, I've always, I mean, I've never had anything too fancy, but I've always liked my cars throughout the years. Like I started off with a Suzuki Jeep. That was my first ever Jeep, little convertible with my name on the back. And, um, then I went into a little MG, you know, soft top MGF, yeah. um, two seater car convertible loved that um, and I had a Mazda 3 and I I loved the Mazda 3 and I always when I got into the electric space I thought God, I hope Mazda 3 bring out a, you know bring Mazda bring out a Mazda 3 electric so I think it would compete with the Model 3 I've always thought it and still think it um, and as soon as I got into the industry I just became a massive fan of Elon like everybody <laughs> everybody does and I've been to America a lot so I'd heard lots about him listened to podcasts and um, obviously put my money down straight away for a Tesla Model 3, not being able to afford it, not having a clue what was going to come, how it was going to be. But um, I was just sold instantly. The second I drove an EV, the second I drove the Leaf, I was I was hooked and well and truly, you know, absorbed into the space. And it gave us a new dimension of business that we never had before. 
So we used to be in the renewable space only. Now we have this whole new automotive space opening up because we've developed the now what we call Zappi. At the time, it didn't have a name. It was just an exciting product that I thought, yes, like it gives me a new, it's a new lease of life. It's a whole um, new, because I like a challenge to getting my teeth into a product and figuring out how we can market it and bring it you know, to real, to the real world, um, instead of just being on a bench in theory. So yeah, it was, it was the Nissan Leaf. And I shared that leaf with Lee because I didn't want to go to meetings in a petrol or a diesel, you know, we was in the renewable space. Um, and I just drove Lee's leaf everywhere. He got me insured on it. I got it all branded up and it just sort of snowballed from there. We then got a Zoe. Um, and then we've got the, um, Nissan van as well, and a couple of other now EVs within the fleet. So the I Pace and the Hyundai. So I got a nice, quite a nice bunch to have a go in and have a look at. And is that the Zoe that uh, that was in um, uh, in the Indiegogo video? No, that's not Zoe. Sorry, Leaf. Um, yeah, yeah. Like- yeah, it would have been the leaf. I was thinking, yeah, it'll be the leaf that was in that. Yeah. And a, a very early leaf. And that's the one that I drove to Orkney and to meet Robert when I first met Robert Llewellyn. So, yeah, I only had to charge 12 times. <laughs> well, every time I go up to um, uh, to sort of towards uh, where you are, it's about 180 miles for me. I have to yeah. stop about three times. Uh, yeah. What have you got? Uh, Nissan Leaf, uh, 30 yeah. kilowatt hour. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, it's... It, in theory, I should be able to do this uh, with two charges, but the uh, but it's the terrain. There's a lot of, especially uh, when you come out of where I live, uh, you have to go up the hill quite a bit. Um, so you know, it's it's a terrain, but you know, it's a it's a uh, it's a fairly old car now. So yeah, was it uh, four four years? I think it's coming up. So uh, or even more than that. So mm-hmm. obviously, technology has moved on <laughs> substantially. But I still love it, even, even though I have to have to uh, stop so many times. I uh, I still love the um, I love the drives uh, in that car. I, I wouldn't. It's such yeah. a comfortable car. Yeah, I just wouldn't Isn't go it? back like, to uh, to a nice. Um... Oh God, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> they just. I've, I've been in. Uh, we've we've still got a van. We've got a camper van. And every now and again, if I, if we're taking the dog out, I have I like have to drive it. And I do find it as it's a chore if I have to drive it. And I used to love that van. It's like a T five, um, VW T five. It's fast, and it's it, it was nice to drive up until the point I've driven EVs. And now it's like an actual chore to go back in it and it smells of diesel every time I strike up the engine to the point where I'm like I hate this van and we are going to sell it because I just unless I could turn it into an electric van somehow because we do like the look of it but it just drives me mad it feels like I'm driving a dinosaur yeah it's a it's it's amazing how you th- I, I, prior to my leave I had a uh, um, a Vauxhall Insignia uh, three yeah. liter turbo charged diesel, and I thought it was quick. And then I had a yeah. for, for a weekend because uh, it was the uh, the sort of Nissan was doing the you know the um, I can't remember what they called it, but they gave you the car for two days. And yeah. I jumped back into my uh, my diesel car, and I I remember that to this day. I stepped on my uh, accelerator pedal, and it just did not move for like what it felt like yeah. two seconds. Yeah, <laughs> you just you know. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the you just difference. there's no going back. There's no going back once you've been in one. As you say, it just feels wrong. It feels like a step back into the, I don't know, the past into the eighties or something. I don't know. Precisely. I I have to say, Zappy is such a lovely name. Like um, you know, whoever came up with it, it's it's just I love it. Uh, like um, there's so many chargers and they they all trying to have sort of pretentious eco-friendly names, but Zappy is just you know. Just, I, I, I it, it's probably because it, you know, it ends in I because of the my energy. I'm guessing ends in I as well. Yeah. So that's that's a similar thing. I'm not a marketing person, exactly. you can tell. Uh, but the, no, uh, but well, you've nailed it. So <laughs> that's exactly we've we've done. We've kept the I in a lot of our marketing and branding. Just yeah. uh, it stands for the intelligence. Really, that's the way we see it. Um, in my energy, we look after the whole home's flow of energy. Um, Zappy was actually because we'd looked and we'd done a bit of market research and looked at the um, EV space and obviously ZapMap's such a poignant um, thing to go to on Google isn't it for charging and it was sort of a play on that really we thought we like Zap like it obviously means 
zapping something with energy or um, electricity so we just sort of fell with it but I mean you should have seen the list before we agreed on that it was we was coming up with all sorts I'm sure I'm sure yeah I've been I've been involved in so many marketing discussions where the lists are you know endless and people come up and come up with some silly names and I, I always come up with the silliest, I have to say, and they uh, they never win because obviously. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think thought, like I can't remember. I think it was Lee that actually thought of it, um, and it's the or as soon as he said it, or as we just both agreed. Like, yeah, we didn't even think about it, and that's one of those things where you know you're onto a bit. I, I think a bit of a winner because if you don't start doubting, you, you can overthink things, and we just we both liked it, so we just went with it. Yeah, it's it's, it's not it's not too sort of. Uh, designed by uh, 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 a committee name, you know, it's not too sort of placid and f- friendly with everybody. It has a bit of it's a zap to it, but at yeah. the same time, yeah. it's it, yeah, it's not like, yeah. I, I just hate it when when I see names that are just too obvious and somebody's yeah. just trying to be too green, and you're like, this is just too much. Yeah. It's just cringy. Whereas like, Zappy is, but you know, the, I don't know the cleaner eco 250 <laughs> charger yeah. something like that yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> a bit long and boring <laughs> <laughs> precisely so i i do like it um we we, we don't you. we don't have a zappy yet although uh there's been a discussion on and off uh especially now uh, sort of the subject came back now that the um the sun is out in the last couple of days and my wife has heard that i'm gonna speak to you so she was like you must ask her about zappy uh, i've asked my uh my subscribers um about some questions that um and everyone asks the same thing so i'm just gonna you know uh the the one question that everybody asks and i think again because i'm a geek and i assume that people know these things i don't want to be patronizing but let's start with an obvious one like what distinguishes zappy from any other charges out there Okay, so um, the first and biggest differentiator, I guess, is the fact that it works with the renewable energy uh, renewable energy source. So with your micro generation system, solar or wind, um, we were the first charger on the market to bridge that gap between renewables and electric vehicle charging. Um, it's got the three modes, so it can just be a standard charge. You don't have to have solar panels to have it. Um, but when you do have solar panels, that's when it really comes into its own. So you can charge it literally with pure green energy straight from the roof so it's energy that would have been exported back to the grid you know when you've got everything going on in the home and the surplus or you've plugged in and you've gone for a walk and nothing's been used in the house and you generate in full all of that energy will trickle feed into the car battery um you wouldn't put it in eco plus mode and charge off the solar if he was in a rush it's more to keep it topped up um, when you parked all day like obviously at the minute with isolation no one's really going very far yeah. um so people were buzzing you know we've i've had so many tweets because if they had completely depleted batteries they're probably full now from the sun because the bit <laughs> it's been sat if you're lucky enough to have a driveway it's been sat on the drive or whatever charging off the zappy so that's the main thing um but there's so many other little hidden features in it as well that just make it so special um and easy to install so we used to be installers ourselves and li- not me personally but lee did um as, as a company um and you know he always talked about you know the lack of thought in products for the electrician or for the installer and these guys you know they're getting it from all angles they're on the road they're working hard they're losing margin on this margin on that you know that middle that middleman that small business that just seems to get squeezed in every sense of the word (laughs) so we look and try and reduce time of install make it like him have super smart to set up and easy to set up we support the customer um afterwards so there's really nice aftercare so the electrician doesn't have to go back out um you know if there's if there's a fault or an error with the product or somebody's struggling with it our support team will look after it um so there's load the load balancing was a really big difference in the zappy because no one had sort of thought of that up until we did and that means that you know if there's a kettle turned on in the home or a shower the zappy will hold off the charge to the car until there's enough energy again so that it doesn't blow the main fuse so we try and look after the main fuse and, and so you, you can you utilize the, uh, the solid uh, power that way a bit better right exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because some people now claim that the, they do solar matching and that's a completely different um, that's a completely different thing. Okay. Solar matching is usually done through an API um, saying, all right, it's sunny now, so turn the charging on. But they don't, that, that app doesn't know if you've turned a kettle on in yeah, the house yeah. shower, so it's pointless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the load balancing is a big part of it and you can have that if you don't have solar as well. So it just protects the main fuse it also has got so much safety features built into it like one thing that i admire about lee is he doesn't just make the cheapest product on the market to make the most money you know if he's got to put a lot of um you know components in there to make it safe he will like there's so many ways of cutting corners in this sort of industry um but he never does he's really thorough with the products and knows the safety inside out and we wouldn't be able to sleep at night as directors if we didn't know that every product going on the home is safe so it actually has got penfold um, protection in it which is patented which means that you don't need an earth rod and it's got the the rcd that protect the protection in there rcd protect protection and um it will trip in like three different ways if there's a fault which means that the car can never become live and you can't be you know electrocuted by a car because yeah. there's more and more evs are on the road and that's why there's this need for the earth spike but having a zappy fitted that's removed so that saves a lot of time for the installer and a lot of um you know it's a less less invasive install um it's yeah it's just got so many safety features so it means that you don't have to have driveways dug up for earth spikes and you know, it's just safe and easy there's not a building that it can't go on really okay. and then obviously you can connect it to the hub which means you can connect it to the internet and you know use the app um to take full remote control divert surplus energy from your solar wherever you want it works alongside third-party batteries and other products because we've been in the renewable space a long time we know how homes work and all how all these different devices work and usually manufacturers of products are pretty green they want you to have their full system in the home we've made allowances that not everyone's going to want our any product they might already have something else that they've invested in maybe our previous product so we want the zappy to be able to fit in with every install and the eddy and you know if someone's got a power wall or a battery that we haven't supplied we want it to be able to work with it and not cause problems yeah. for the customer so we just really think about the customer really think about the installer um so without blowing our own trumpet we were <laughs> very smart because <laughs> every other charger on the market was Sounds pretty average <laughs> i'm just gonna say it, <laughs> Craig, say it. So, so, so i'm asking because the uh, lots of people either don't want to go to the website or um i find myself sometimes navigating some websites and i'm confused there's too much information yeah. and it's just easier to, to talk to people and you know hopefully uh, my listeners will listen to you and be like oh i you know i'm wondering about the zappy thing now you know um because i i've heard so much about it um prior talking to you or even prior to uh to getting my ev people yeah. were mentioning it uh, and i've read about it on the forums but it's always nicer to just you know um to talk to, to people and um i yeah before i, I got the ev um so the funny thing with me is that we had the leaf for a year and a half or so um without having our own charger so i mm-hmm. because we lived on, in london at the time there's, there's there was plenty of char- charging you know spots around um so i didn't have to think about it and then we moved to a house in the sticks and um now we have solar as well the the discussion is you know different but it's a different environment basically to think about so um, yes and you'll we, love it we, <laughs> we're lucky enough to have uh our own char- uh, driveway sorry to um so we you know and we we do have a charging point already but it's uh i'm not going to mention the name of the company but the uh you know the, it's a very nice charging point but it's not intelligent enough to uh, to divert the um, the electricity from the solar. Um, so what what I do is like a, it's a very uh, it's a very um, silly solution. But I sometimes just put the cable outside because uh, it's a seven kilowatt hour charger. But our yeah. panels our panels are four kilowatts. So um, and you never get a, a more than about two and a half out of them because they're on two different sides of the roof. So obviously yeah. uh, 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 you know. Just physics is, you know, um, not allowing me to generate four kilo four kilowatts at the, at the same time. 
which is fine. Um, but I just put the cable outside and put the granny charger into the car when it's sunny outside, um, and yeah. kind of hope that most of the power from the uh, from the, the solar goes into the the car. <laughs> well, that's how Zappy was born, to be fair, because that's exactly what Lee was doing, and it was infuriating him that he was having to sort of do that or run in and out and yeah. unplug the car, plug the car in. You know, just it's like there's got to be an easier way, and I wonder if it'll work the same way as the the Eddy technology, and we just got about developing it. Yeah, and. Um, we, we we quite often um, and I'm sure loads of people do the same thing we have a sm- smart charger and quite often a smart uh, smart meter sorry and quite often yeah. we'll just glued to that meter just looking for uh, for negative figures and then put on the wash or the washing machine or uh, or a dishwasher yeah. at, uh, at that time so it's uh, yeah it sounds like you know Zappy is just basically solving one of those issues and from what I've seen it gives you a nice overview of where your power goes in the, in a house as well right so that's that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and all that can be done with a wireless sensor, which is nice. You ain't got to have wires all around the home um, oh, okay. with our Harvey device. That's what Harvey is. Okay. Um, yeah. So the next question I have on the list from the uh, my listeners is, um, and you've kind of you've you've um, you mentioned that already, but uh, can you use it as just a regular dumb quote unquote charger? And I'm guessing the answer is yes, right? Um, so if I didn't have solar uh, panels... Can zap you it like a dumb charger? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just have it in fast mode. Okay. Literally just in fast mode. But you can also use the load balancing when it's in eco mode. But you just can't maximise the benefit of eco plus the third mode, which is for the solar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. if you guys... do, you have, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes, but do you guys have any other people who have... Because obviously you can generate your own power in the house uh, using the wind turbines as well and i'm sure some people do have little turbines on the roofs or uh, or in the garden yeah no we do work with wind turbines as well we've got a few um zappies especially up in orkney that work with small um turbines it can work with any micro generation because it's monitored at the grid point okay the zappy, yeah the zappy monitors the grid so it can see import and export of the building so it doesn't really matter what's doing the generating yeah yeah as long as you have something that's kind of tagged as a as a generator you're a uh, you're happy, right? Yeah, yeah. Happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, a, a business question now. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, because you guys are obviously are based in the UK, do you see any challenges sort of in running, or can you speak t- to any sort of challenges in running, uh, quote unquote, renewables business in the UK? How difficult it is compared to other businesses? Um, we've not had any troubles really being because we do you know we manufacture everything ourselves as well yeah um so that's probably where some people say what are you crazy like are you just gonna how long are you gonna do your manufacturing for like, are you gonna end up shipping the products off to china and getting it made there or somewhere cheaper and we're just very much against that we've always wanted to keep the um, manufacturing and keep the business within the uk obviously lots of the parts come from abroad we can't help that because nowhere else makes them but we want the manufacturing to be in the uk and we haven't really had any issues there i'm guess i guess really the hardest thing is probably finding the staff when it comes to you know technical people we bring a lot of firmware developers in from abroad we've got one of our main zappy developers he's french he's come from strasbourg we've got a guy um from malaysia um you know we have to look far and wide for the staff because we're not in a city because we're based in lincolnshire it's probably geographical of the uk where we struggle a little bit but um, we're still managing because it's an innovative company and it ticks all the boxes it's in the renewable space it's in the automotive growing automotive space it's in man- uk manufacturing so um we've recently got a grant to help, help us build a new factory because we're struggling for space and there's nowhere suitable in our surrounding area and because the council's wanting to keep us um they managed to get some ha- some money on some funding to help us build our new purpose-built factory so we've actually had a lot of support from the uk and councils and grants and it's i think it, it, we didn't intend to set out that way but it's because we tick so many green boxes so if anything it's a massive bonus being okay. based here and we haven't seen too many problems but yeah because you, you hear about loads of companies who knows that- um, everyone up, says it was all. Yeah, you, you hear about loads of companies who set up in America because apparently that's the big, yeah. that's the best place. But the uh, not everybody wants to move to America to set up a business. Yeah. So it's it's good to hear because the um, yeah, I, I always imagined uh, places like Lincolnshire to be full of 
you know, engineers and people who, because there's lots of army uh, or people who who worked like in army bases and and did lots of engineering that way. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like I said, like I mentioned, one of my clients is is in, is based in um, in sort of that way. Although mm -hmm. that's not Lincolnshire, but it's it's you know it's a similar area. Yeah, and there seem to be lots of businesses uh, doing technical stuff around there, like uh, engineering. So I, uh, you know, yeah, Newark. I mean, we've definitely we've found some talent in Newark as well, and might be opening an office in Newark soon. Um, again, to gain some some more expertise and some more maybe some more developers. So we're just um we'll see we're always looking however we can help bring because innovation is at, at the core of our business you know we've got a long roadmap of products that we're going to bring out and keep improving the firmware and the services on top of the products that we've already sold and distributed and offer different services to customers um so yeah whatever we've got to do to find the stuff i guess <laughs> <laughs> right so the next question is uh, less less businessy serious because i don't like to be all business um, okay <laughs> what is the sort of the most <laughs> fun or and or silly question you've ever heard about evs or renewables you can uh, it doesn't have to be one if there's more <laughs> uh, one of them my friend asked if it's okay in the rain if an electric car is okay in the rain or if you can um, take it through a car wash uh, they were saying are you going to be electrocuted um i was like no we're fine i seem to get asked I, that's not <laughs> me mean it's not a silly question but when because when you're in the industry but i suppose for people that aren't it's a valid question electricity and water yeah, um yeah. What else did I get asked? My, I think it was my nana. <laughs> she said, "She said, do you have to? Does that mean you need an extension? How long does the extension cable need to be? I mean, we call her nanny nutter for a reason. She's from um, Mexborough, York. She's a proper Yorkie, proper old school, um, and she just started, she thought you'd need an, an extension cable to run the car around. So that was definitely an interest." moment and um still some of my friends locally say to me so what do you do do you manufacture electric cars i'm like mm, that's not what we do <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah on, on the last episodes i don't know when this will, this will come out but the uh, the last episode i was trying to explain because uh, one of the questions that i get is the um what happens if one of the terminals of the battery gets exposed and touches the chassis of the car do you then get you know electrocuted so the answer yeah. is no um <laughs> obviously yeah. uh but the uh um yeah um we had loads of floods as well recently and um and people were amazed that i could drive my car through a you know pretty deep water yeah because uh, again everyone assumed that um and i had some people i had a guy in subaru trying to follow me and he just obviously got stuck um yeah and had, and had to be dragged out by somebody else it was uh, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting it was interesting oh, but the, yeah, the question about water like yeah like you say it's you know i'm I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be uh, mean about uh, people who ask these questions, but it's it's funny to us. So I'm just I'm just curious about any funny stories because the uh, um, do you get loads of questions about the charger itself if it's waterproof and you know whether it can be installed outside and all that. Yeah, yeah, we get asked that, but to be fair, that's also like because it does it does look like it could just be an indoor product, like just for the garage. So um, we do get asked if it's you know going to be fine in really hot weather or if it's absolutely tipping it down but yes it's ip65 rated so it's totally fine outdoors <laughs> but to be honest i don't know that's all i can think of really like am i going to get electrocuted if i go through the drive through do i have to plug it in with an extension cable um pretty random <laughs> questions <laughs> um, but i can't think of any more if i'm honest yeah the, the, the other one of my favorites is like um uh, uh can i have can i use the kettle or uh, or hot shower at the same time as i charge the car uh, but you know again it's some people sometimes don't realize the scale of things you know and how how they work it's just you know I, I'm, i'm sure lots of people were asked the same questions about the uh, the petrol and diesel cars back in the day um, exactly yeah so it's just anything that's new moving so 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 fast though isn't it so yeah, yeah. you know whenever i start because because zappy also does so much more on a on a whole other scale as well which i wouldn't want to go into in too much depth but i mean like offering services back to the grid and load balancing the grid and things like that demand side response whenever i start talking about that people just lose their minds because it's just you're taking it that whole step further where yeah. just charging the car off the solar panels is a is a not is a lot for people that aren't in the industry or aren't interested it's just like what <laughs> an electric car is still a new concept to a lot of people isn't it yeah, yeah. So you have to strip it right back 
definitely. I, I remember um, I, had, I had my tyres ch- uh, changed at the at a garage somewhere uh, near uh, one of my uh, customers' offices, and the um, and I brought it in, and I could see that the guy who worked there was like a boy racer, and you know his little whatever he had Fiesta or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, can't, I can't remember one of those cars that kind of looked like it was tuned quote, quote unquote yeah. um, and I said to him you know you know this is quicker than your car of the line and he opened the bonnet and looked at me and was like with what with what because he was expecting you know the the, 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 the the way they think is the or people you know I, should say, I shouldn't say they but the uh, people like that uh, they, they obviously assume that it has to make a noise obviously for it to be quick and B yeah. you have to be big like the bigger yeah. the thingy that makes the power, the better. Uh, but yeah. I just don't realize the, the 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 scales of things. But you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to change. I'm sure. Um, well, I'm, it, it'll be interesting because I um, I can't remember what it's called, but the uh, the assumption that uh, that that the noise equals power, I, you know, uh, is is just because the the ice engines have to make noise to make the power. Like it's the uh, yeah exactly. And obviously, somebody turned it into a marketing advantage, advantage, like you know, people from Subaru or um, yeah. or Harley or um, you know, some other companies like that. But anyway, digressing again. <laughs> I get I get all sorts of funny questions, and I'm always happy to to answer them very patiently. And, uh, and yeah, to, uh, same. You have to be patient. I, uh, the thing I get a lot is, oh, I just love the noise of a car. You'll know never get me driving an electric I, I mean i get i get it so much um you know being public facing just the actual ev hate before they've even given it a go because just because it's change or um i don't know but that's all it's always it's always the same with anything new <laughs> yeah, always yeah. Gonna get a bit of <laughs> i i have i have to I have to ask. I, I don't have to put that in, but the uh, if you don't want to, but the uh, I'm always curious. Like you know, as a lady, do you get loads of silly, silly questions as well? Like if you if you if you if you want to shame men uh, for asking super. Oh, sorry. Um. um yeah. I, I, uh, so, uh, as a lady, do you get loads of questions, uh, silly questions about electric cars, and you know. Um, or sillier than than if you were a man basically to be fair no everyone's been super respectful the only thing i get is um no matter how sort of well the business does or how many charges we sell or how many evs are on the road every now and again i come across a, a bloke in particular or s- it's usually a man that's saying thing that's saying that the industry's not going anywhere um you know that it's the electric vehicles aren't going to happen like it's very that macho sort of yeah you're having a bit of success now but it's not going to take off it's not going anywhere it's that very they like to shut it down really quick if if i've been introduced or if i I don't know it not it not within our space obviously because people are a lot more understanding of it but um if i'm going to a networking or a business meeting and i'm I'm introduced straight away it's like anti ev or um and then if it's a female that's telling you this it's it's, that's rocked up especially in a tesla now i've got a tesla it's a little bit just puts people i don't know sometimes just pisses people off (laughs) sorry (laughs) to swear (laughs) but um but i'd say 98 percent of people are spot on really and they're really interested to learn it's just there's always that few that just give you a bit of grief but i can handle them (laughs) yeah uh yeah, I'm just, I'm always, because yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm I sort of in that privileged position being a, a, a white bloke is that, you know, I don't get as much. And I hear things from other people. I'm always curious. Just uh, Yeah. I think that the term for you, what you're saying is gaslighting, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, and I get that a lot, you know, being a, a foreigner, basically, or immigrant. Uh, yeah. I, I get that some, uh, that angle sometimes as well. And, you know, I, I, I don't pay attention to it anymore because it's, you know, I don't, I'm not going to deal like, yeah. Um, yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah. we, again, another subject I can, no, talk, I like, I can talk for hours. I like to, I'm quite a positive person, so I always like to flip it on its head because especially like it, what's coming to my advantage sometimes is if I'm going to a meeting yeah. and obviously they've been speaking to a Jordan on on my emails, automatically they think I'm going to be a boy or a bloke. And then I rock okay. up full blonde <laughs> <laughs> business owner, a bit scatty. Um, and, and it's sort of, take the legs from under them a little bit 
sense that well what expecting that and it dearms them a little bit straight away you know yeah. just they don't have to be as um, macho as what they probably usually are in business meetings or whatever it's got but then it can go against me as well because I don't you know I, I wouldn't get invited to the golf course or to where <laughs> business deals are done or to gentlemen's clubs and things like that you know like a bit of old school way of doing business because I'm not you know not the stereotypical business person I guess uh, neither am I and I I actually I've I don't go to any any meetings like that I don't I don't feel very well around sort of macho men pretending so you know uh, uh guys it's because it's all pretense like it's not it's not real um we have mo- that in common then <laughs> <laughs> most of them if you if you um if you if you see them face to face outside of the group some of them will actually confess to you because they see that you're you're different they will actually you know um talk to you sort yeah. of as a person and i prefer that um so i've probably lost loads of business opportunities that way but you know i think i'm better off for it because i wouldn't want to I, I would i would have hated myself if i had to keep, keep uh, doing uh, if i had to do that all the time yeah you'd have to be faking it all the time and they're not the type of people that you want to be in business with are they so Precisely. it's a good thing about our space it's um it's innovators it's te- techie geeks it's um it everybody's comfortable no one like no one judges anyone and it's a real nice space to be in and that's why i've always been into rock music as well because i go to rock concerts and gigs and it's the usually it's the misfits it's the um people that are letting their hair down with that particular type of music and they're just accepting and i've always always liked that sort of environment and that sort of industry so yeah (laughs) cool um so next question um this one's from a listener greg this bloke um if you if you weren't at, <laughs> if you weren't at my energy what would you do like uh would you still carry on uh with the bicycle uh industry or you know no my i am never leaving the renewable or electric vehicle space again um and i think about this you know because people ask me like what's you know if you've got an exit plan what's the are you waiting to sell out and things like that? And obviously until you're faced with a really serious offer, I don't, I don't know how I'd respond, but my heart is in this industry and I honestly don't know what I do. Like it's something that I question myself with all the time. Um, maybe, you know, there's so many cool companies out there and what a dream of mine is obviously if i manage to have some financial freedom because at the minute i'm very <laughs> not free i'm skint <laughs> so if i had some sort of financial freedom i would um i'd love to invest in startups or i've had you know i've had an experience of sitting on a board which i've never done that before and i would love to be able to advise young startups or sit on a board as a non-exec or um if i had money i would invest it in startups and in technology within the space and i would very much like to social i love social media and i love um, podcasting i don't like public speaking i get nervous as hell sweaty stumble over my words don't like it it freaks me out but behind the camera social media myself where i've got the control that would be something that i would develop further um and i I always thought i'd love to go work for the fully charged guys or um (laughs) I don't know, just because I love them, (laughs) they probably won't want me. But um, just, I don't know, anything, as long as it's within the space is what I'd do. But I cannot see myself not being at my energy for a very long time because the sky's the limit with this industry we've not even we're at the bottom of the hockey curve yeah he's yeah. haven't even taken off yet and i want to see i want to ride that out and i want to make sure that my energy is a household name you know in as many countries as possible before i before i quit it um it depends how stressful it gets well if, 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 if you guys want to follow uh, a fun instagram profile you know then uh, your profile is definitely something to to follow i'll put it in a in a link but uh, oh thank you thank uh, you because i think everyone should follow you on, on instagram and on Twitter. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't have a I don't have a massive subscription base, but you know I'm not a, I'm not a, like um, I'm not fully charged. They have you know thousands and thousands of people. Uh, but. Yeah, that's crazy how much they've got. But no, but it's targeted and it's the, again like I say, it's lovely accepting people that are listening and very engaged. I love the most physically love it when people message me and ask me um you know advice for business or um ask me advice about charging if i don't know the answer i don't know the answer but a lot of the times with being so absorbed in the space i I can usually find the answer if i don't know it so um i do love speaking to people and encouraging the sector of course cool um so apart from the uh sort of the battery storage 
which you know so is like the big next thing that um I think everyone should have one at home, and mm-hmm. again, we're thinking about, thinking about it. But the cost is very prohibitive at the moment uh, mm-hmm. for most of the household. Um, what else do you think is missing on the market? Uh, uh, you know that you you know that you're not going to obviously. I don't want to talk about things that you guys will work will already work on or, or will work on, but the mm. uh, things that you would love other people to see or inspire to look into, but you don't you don't see anyone else doing it or doing it sort of poorly now. Good question. I mean, anything that we sort of think is missing, we're probably working on. So (laughs) uh, it's a tough one because I don't want to give away too much. Or I would tell you happily, but then we start getting actual abuse because we're not making it quick enough and I can't can't deal with the stress. Um, (laughs) But what would I like to see? Um, I don't know. I, I, I swear, like, I just want the adoption of renewable energy more um so whatever it takes to promote that sector like every home that could have solar panels should so any you know i'm i don't know if there's anything technological that we're missing that would would sell that more but i just think the idea and the um education of it and um I'd, I'd love to see that more. Basically, I want to see a world where as many homes as possible has got solar panels or wind turbines, as many people are driving EV and the whole grid and systems connected and smart and everybody helps each other and there's peer-to-peer peer charging and sharing. And I'd love to look at the vehicle to grid space more um, because I do see that that's the way that it's going to go. Um, so I guess affordable vehicle to grid chargers is something I would like to see more of. Um but because they're so expensive at the moment, um, but they are, but they are coming. So it's only a matter of time. It's just, I guess, when the manufacturers, the car manufacturers, are on board with it a little bit more, um, because there's all that worry over who's going to cover warranty of the battery and things like that, and yeah, how it affects yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I hope that answers your question. I don't really know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I, uh, you know, because I'm an engineer myself. I I've started businesses in the past. Uh, I've I've been looking at a few ideas myself. And one of them was a vehicle to yeah. charge. But from a technical point of view, and this might get too techy, but the uh, um, the Chatmo is the only uh, charging standard at the moment that actually supports vehicle to grid. So the vehicle manufacturer has to actually design the vehicle with um, vehicle to grid in in mind. Uh, technically, exactly. technically, because with the DC charging on every car, you know the, the rapid charging, every any car that's capable of rapid charging should be capable technically quote unquote uh to to do vehicle to char- uh, to grid even including ccs exactly. plugs um mm-hmm. but the uh but it, it, the car needs to be able to to kind of open up basically uh to to, to get because because once exactly. you uh yeah well, once you have a car that can uh, rapidly uh, rapid charge or quick charge um the the two sort of big prongs on your in your charger become just battery prongs so you know you, exactly. it, your car just becomes a battery right <laughs> um and, exactly, and with, with like any AA rechargeable battery, whether you pull the power out of it or you pull put the power into it, it doesn't matter. As long as, long as you have the uh, the terminals exposed, you can just do either. So it's the same principle. Um, we see um, it's the the you know the easier option would probably be for AC um, vehicle to grid charging because that way the inverter is already built into the car um, you know you could probably do it with a software update on the Zappi you know, that's it would be so much simpler and so much more affordable but um, there's only a few car manufacturers sort of talking about going down that route and it's like Mercedes I think it's one of them um, but you know we need everybody we need all the manufacturers to adopt the same sort of mentality and then make you know make a decision don't we and then yeah, people yeah. can run with it but it's a bit of a way off yet <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i, I agree I, I i i'm surprised that people don't have solars on their uh on their on their roofs and then i then i remember how much we paid for ours and uh you know we i think we calculated the uh the the return on investment or, or sort of not even the return on investment but just uh to get even uh, it's going to take us over 10 years with the um the feed-in tariff um Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a very hard to calculate it. Uh, so, and technically, you can get even more out of it if you have the battery. But then, battery costs more, and that kind of delays the, the you know, it's 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 all e- economical. Um, you know, this has changed obviously in 2017 or 16, where the whole feed-in tariff situation got worse, as you mentioned. That's- 
so actually like the price of solar panels have come down so much now um that it starts to stack up without the feed-in tariff but when you're right like people who signed up to solar back in the day when they were getting paid 50p a kilowatt hour or something are absolutely quids in but they paid more for the panels but they're tied into like 25 year long contracts so they'll definitely have paid it off by now mm-hmm. um but like that's why it pays to self-consume. So that's why Eddie and Zappi and products that we manufacture come into their own because they are maximising the benefit. They're they're return. They're in, they're increasing your return on investment like tenfold, a couple of hundred pounds to well two to five hundred pounds a year savings i mean how many products do we buy in our home that are actually saving us money you know you, there's, that's, there's that's become a bit true. of a there's, there's <laughs> become a bit of a thing in the marketplace like a race to the bottom on pricing with charges and, and um we've got so much tech in there and so many components we're not about that 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 game you know we are a premium product but if you invest a little bit more it is actually something that's going to pay for itself whereas others aren't um so yeah well I, you know i i see that the uh, with the with the whole corona virus situation i even though i don't want to talk too much about it because i'm not you know it's not it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not it's not the subject i want to get into too much but the uh, i i hope that uh a good thing that comes out of it is the fact that a more people are going to um think about the uh, the supply chain so manufacture things closer to home yeah and, uh and uh and also um you know i've always been in the mindset that i i'd rather pay something for something that's slightly more expensive but will last me longer than mm-hmm. keep on buying the same thing over and over again and uh, like <clears throat> that's a very boring subject but like washing machine for your house or or a dishwasher i'd rather you know pay double or triple uh, the price but have something for 15 years then uh, and i've had like. wash- i've had a uh, you know um uh i've had appliances basically for over 10 years that were expensive at the time but uh, if i just bought the uh, the cheapest one i just i i don't like yeah. this whole this whole race to the bottom thing is it's, it's an anno- annoying and it's not the it's way- very british really i don't know like is, why yeah. we do that <laughs> yeah um because there's a famous saying as well that i always use it because it always comes back to bite me on the ass so like if i do buy something cheap i usually end up buying twice it's buy yeah. cheap buy twice it's so true yeah but there's lots of countries um around the world where people can't afford things that are you know premium sort of products as well yeah. and and a, and a and a thought of of paying a thousand pounds for a product for instance or or even 500 pounds for a yeah. for a washing machine is you know it's three or four times more than they can afford but the uh but like i say it's, it's usually biting them back in the in the in a, in a backside because the uh because in two three years they have to pay again Replace and, it. exactly and it's not it's usually not the greatest product on earth right it's the uh, it's usually th- it affects their the bills every day and it affects the, the quality of their lives so um yeah. i you know uh, a lot of people well this this might be just me because i'm not that old but the um uh, loads of people say oh yeah well our grandfathers you know would buy a single pair of shoes and that will last them half of their lives but the uh, the, the the truth of it is that they paid half of their salary for for the, yeah. the, those shoes right they didn't buy them for 10 quid um no exactly so, <laughs> they have to make them last <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a massive difference right um anyway and probably because things were made a little bit better back in the day um if everyone's just trying because of the race to the bottom people are scrimping and scraping on the quality of manufacturing or the quality of the components or the ingredients to make something or you know but yeah, that's a whole other whole other subject, and <laughs> we've gone about that. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's not get, let's not go there, perhaps. Yeah, it was something that it was actually only this morning because uh, Elon posted a tweet. Let me see if I can find it. Did you see one of his latest tweets? And I, I read it, and I thought I had to read it about five times to try and let it sink in. But I still think it's open for in- interpretation, really. And me and Lee had a bit of a debate about it, which I've not learned something, but it's made me think. Um, so he, he tweets all sorts of random. His things. latest tweet was great difference so random so it says great differences in technology exist in the world about which even hardcore technologists are unaware and i was like what <laughs> but you think, <laughs> it's one of those things i'm sure he, he went to a meeting and just had a like thought and was like i'll yeah. just tweet that because i do that sometimes as well i'll, I'll send out a, a silly tweet that nobody will yeah. even like because 
you know, it's like, what? And I'm not Elon, obviously, so um, yeah. I, I don't give I the attention. That's cryptic as hell. <laughs> and I, I gave it some thought, and me and Lee are always chatting, because, um, you know, Lee, my business partner, he is a genius. He's, like, he's... We, we call ourselves Pinky in the Brain. Obviously, he's Brain and Pinky, and I'm always trying to learn off him and get as much information. I said, what do you think about this tweet? I always leave him voice notes because I can't be bothered to text, so we voice note each other. And I said, that the way I'm reading it is that, which I find so cool, so all the world is full of technologists and full of scientists and innovators, but yet even with all of those people and all of those brains, we still don't know what the next technological advancement is going to be like in the world. You know, for example, electricity, that was the, that was something that was like groundbreaking back in the day. And then, then we've got the internet. I wonder what that next big thing is. And that's what I thought he meant by his tweet. And that's what, what got me thinking. Like, I, w- I hope it's in our lifetime that there's this next revolutionary sort of technology that we don't even know is there yet you know so that's something that i thought of and like i don't know pondered on for a little while but it's not really anything i've learned i don't know i just thought it was the th- something that i feel felt i'd share <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine that's fine um i um i've got two more questions if that's all right okay uh question from me uh if i ever got zappy can i get a red cover on it a red cover. Yeah, you know the, the sort of the outline. That's the thing. Yeah. That's, can I can I get that in red? <laughs> um, I can see what I can do. <laughs> it, it's just a silly question. I, I like color red is like my favorite. So you know. Let um, me see if I can do that for you. I think <laughs> we might be able to get it dipped, or we could ask where because it's a UK obviously a manufacturer that does our enclosure. So I could okay. I could definitely ask. I'll, I'll ask the question. That will look bright. I'm fine with I that. Like I'm fine with that. I like, I, uh, I like it. Maybe I should get one in pink to match my headband. <laughs> and so, okay, so that was just a silly question because I just had to ask it. <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll see. Um, the uh, an, an extra extra question. So, if you if if you ever if you were ever to meet Elon Musk, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what question would you ask him? Have you got a zappy? no um i would definitely obviously introduce the products because i'm like i don't understand i mean surely one day they're going to do it connect all the products to do what ours do but at the the moment they don't it's because they focus so much on the big stuff you know the manufacturing of the cars the manufacturing of the solar tiles the manufacturing of the battery the manufacturing of the charger but none of them fully sync up yet um, the way that my energy devices do so i don't want to give him an idea away but i'd want to say we are the missing link to your system let's work together (laughs) (laughs) yeah invest a couple million quid (laughs) yeah um but I don't know. I've, I've got so many questions for him. I think I'd just be like totally starstruck because um, I do really, really like the guy. Um, so I'd probably, uh, I've got long, a long list of questions that I'd love to ask him, but I'd totally freeze and look like a complete tuna melt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know what I would ask him personally. Like I have so many questions as well. Like I think he he likes to geek out on people. So he likes people who, you know, have done any like business in their life or who are serious basically yeah. about what they're doing but at the yeah. same time who are fun like you know who are able to goof and uh i think he he would like you you know i'm sure you, you guys oh. could, could chat you know uh, yeah well, i would uh, you know because he's done you know I, I quite like a conspiracy theory and i quite like um i'd probably go in with the hardcore questions like you know so have you do aliens exist what do you know you're like you're super rich now have you peeked behind the curtain like what's it area 51 i'd be like <laughs> all the boring questions that i'm sure has been asked a million times but i would love to just go deep into a chat maybe he, i know he likes a bit he smoked a bit of weed and he's done iowa where he's had crazy experiences i'd like to unfold that side of his brain and ask him what he thinks about the big picture and maybe talk about spirituality um i don't know so many questions basically is into <laughs> everything i'm into and he loves space i like space a lot um he's obviously into all of what we're into but then i'd start 
going deep into like Neuralink and asking him about that, you know, how he sees us becoming part of technology in the future and what his fears are of AI, because if he's scared, I'm scared. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> there's so there's so many questions for that guy. Um, I'd be absolutely devastated if something ever came out about him. You know, I'm surprised that he's got off scot-free really, you know, like where the media haven't gone after him hard. I know there was that thing about the pedo guy that he tweeted and he generally says what he wants, but, um, you know, usually the way the system works, they try and bad mouth somebody or criminalize them or demonize them. Or, you know, if something awful was to come out about him, I'd, I'd be devastated, but I'd be like, what is, I don't know if I'd believe it. You know, I'm dreading that day because I like him that much. Like I've got that much respect for him. that I just think don't ever come out to be a total weirdo or something because he's the type of guy that we really need to have right now and yeah, be looking yeah. up to. I, think and, it, uh, I guess I don't want the Elon hype train to end is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, I, th- I think deep down he's just a geek and, uh, you know, um, he's not, not sort of a person. Like he's just, um, I don't know. Uh, He's, he's, he, he's he seems so socially awkward, yes, so yeah. socially awkward it's, that it's so endearing. Uh, I love watching his product launches and cringing. I think, oh, gosh, <laughs> this is so awkward to watch. But I can relate because I'm like, I bet he is hating every minute of being up there, but he's doing it because he's got to. He knows that he is the money man. He knows that people are investing in him more than probably than the tech. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. No, interesting, interesting. Uh, I, I probably would have froze as well. But the uh, I've I've seen a few clips of him interacting with some people who had just like two minutes with him and randomly bumping into him uh, somewhere in the because he's obviously always surrounded by a trash of people, you know, entourage yeah. of people. But the, yeah. Um, um, but if you mention something to him that triggers that spark in his brain, he's happy to chat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, if you started talking about charging, I'm sure he would be uh, he'd be game. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I thought you were going to say be bored. <laughs> like, no, no. I think he's got more fish to fry with his rockets than uh, charging, but he might be interested to know that that's what I do as a career instead of just, like, begging him for a job like everybody must do all the time. Or I, I can't even imagine. Like, I'm sure there isn't a question out there that he hasn't been asked. It would take a lot of thought to get his attention, I think. <laughs> but who uh, knows? Yeah. Do, do, uh, speaking of charging, do, do you think there's anything that can be still improved in a, in a way we do charging. Not like, you know, because obviously we have certain um, cabling and connector standards. Do you think mm. that, that needs to change in the future or do you think it's going to last for a very long time? The way it is. Um, you know, it just needs to become easier for people. And I think one thing that would be great um, you know, as an innovation company, we could do a hell of a lot more and make people's charging experience a lot easier if we could get the VIN number from the cars when they plug into an AC charger. So that's one thing that needs massive improvement. Um, but because that's just going to unlock a lot of the unanswered questions, I think, um, and make people's yeah charging experience easier, as I said. So apart from that, um, I don't want to give away our secrets of what's to come. <laughs> I know how the, the the type two charging works, and the uh, it, I th- when I speak to people and they they kind of think how it works, they often give it too much credit, and it's just so yeah. primitive. Uh, yeah, it, it's literally like you know analog technology from like eighties, basically. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. It what is, about you, know, you? What would you like to see as an EV driver, as as a Leaf driver? Um, well, I would like to have a Model 3 on my drive, uh, so I'm envious uh, of you, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. I probably wouldn't be able to afford it if it wasn't through the business, so let me just put it that, that yeah, because of the BIC being at 0%. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about the about the same thing uh, uh, now as well, with the BIC being 0%, 0% but the... Um, uh, the, we're not in a sort of economical, you know, situation now where I would like, like to invest in a, in a car. Uh, uh, I need yeah. to ride it out for a, uh, before I move on. Um, Absolutely. But I, well, in the in the charging itself, what I would love to see is it's just a simple serial port, uh, so that you know, car can talk to the charger, like you say, exchanging a VIN yeah. or uh, anything, just simple information yeah. about you know whatever. Like I would silly thing like being able to turn on my heating or or air conditioning in a car via the charger. So when I'm at home. Yeah. I don't have to have a specific app for the car. You know, yeah. I, I have a charger, say I have a Zappi and I've got the um, my energy app on my phone and I can just do it that mm-hmm. way. 
uh yeah it, it would improve things so much um if, if we could and and um i'm not i'm not sure i agree with uh um with cars having the uh, um the bi uh directional ac uh input and output because uh, because obviously you don't want to log around uh, gear that isn't going to be used uh, often in a car. Obviously, the weight matters in a car, but I think yeah. a vehicle to grid should be in should be just in every car. Uh, like, it but do be... you know that the inverter is already in every car? Yeah, yeah. All oh, right, yeah. I was going to say it's not something that they would have to add in on top of it now. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. something that's there. Yeah. Yeah, true. But, it, but it's usually a three phase uh, uh, one, and it's integrated with you know the the driving unit and it's designed. F- to drive it, um, but yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, I think Zoe is the only car that actually has sort of bi-directional AC um, units because they want to be able see, to yeah. use the same unit to charge and to uh, um, run the car. But it's it's for mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a space saving measure rather than you know um, anything else. And obviously that yeah. that that poses certain um, engineering um, restrictions and. Yeah, they they had issues with the first uh, sort of uh, first generation of Zoe's because of it. But you know, as, as, yeah, that's the, that's the we way were very aware of that problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, one of the reasons we didn't we never got Zoe is a that slightly too slightly too small for, for me, and leave us you mm-hmm. know big sort of it's it it the sort of Goldilocks zone anyway. Um, yeah, but the charging issues that we had with with Zoe when we had it for for a week. Uh, I just wasn't happy about that. Um, yeah. It was just too unreliable. Well, we had to do a lot of tweets and work with the Zoe. It was okay. the bane of our life at one point. <laughs> but it, now the Zappy plugs in and recognise, recognises that it's plugged into a Zoe and adapts its uh, charge settings. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's very cool. Yeah, it's not easy being a charge point manufacturer because the um, cars are always having software updates as well and not always meeting with the regs how you, you know, so it's, we because we're a young company, we have to be the ones that adapts because people straight away point the finger yeah, <laughs> at the yeah. charger, not the car. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of experience of um, software upgrades to match cars. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing how that works with the... Uh, um people always blame the you know they buy a new car that doesn't work on a, a random rapid charger but they they blame the the rapid charger manufacturer or, or a charger manufacturer uh not exactly. the car <laughs> uh, no, we get we get a lot of it we get a lot of heat for that if something if something changes within the car and it's so always the customers to let us know because obviously you don't know that there's going to be a change coming and it's just like what <laughs> um, but luckily, one one good thing about the about Tesla is um, they are quite responsive with us. Um, you know, they do communicate because they're wanting to get it right as well. So if we point out something that's changed in their software that doesn't necessarily meet like EU regs, they're all over it and they they're quick to help us and change it. Same with same with Jaguar. But trying to get hold of some of these bigger boy manufacturers that have been going for a long time, it's their way or the highway really. So yeah, yeah. it's just struggle to find a workaround, but we get there. <laughs> and it's amazing how many Tesla owners actually own a Zappi. Um, yeah. a, a virtually every um, um, Tesla owner that I know has a Zappi charger. Like, um, oh, I don't know scenario. that many. I know about 10 or, or 15. But the, uh, yeah. but pretty much every single one of them has a Zappi. And uh, there's a guy, uh, John is his name, living, living in, in, the, in my town. And he's got mm-hmm. two Zappis. Two. Really? <laughs> see, see, yesterday was the first day that I've seen a zappy in the wild that I didn't know about. And um, because I always think about it, like, we've shipped how many units? I mean, we've shipped 50,000 products, and it's probably about 20,000 zappies. And I have never seen one when I've been out and about driving. I'm like, where are these magical things? Where are these going? Who are they going <laughs> to? Never know. So when people pop up on Twitter, or I found out recently that Richard Hughes from the band Keen, he's got one. Apparently, I don't know if it's true, um, but Rebecca Adlington's got one. And I, I tried messaging her on Instagram, but she ignored me. <laughs> I was like, if you've got a zappy, hello. <laughs> um, so every now and again, like I find out where they go. But I was out walking just for my hours exercise that I was allowed yesterday. And um, I walked past a house in my hometown and I, I spotted the Tesla first. I was like, there's a Tesla Model 3, like the same color as mine, same spec. So I was like, I ain't that up. And it was my <laughs> husband that went, oh my God, you're a zappy. And I was like, Oh, 
like, oh my god, I started freaking out. I felt like Beyonce. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is what Beyonce must feel like. <laughs> this is happy. I was taking photos of this poor person's house, like trying to blur out the house, but like zooming in on the zappy. I couldn't believe it. So that's my first experience of actually seeing one in the wild. Yeah, I think I've seen it on Instagram in one of your stories. Oh, did you? Oh, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I assumed it was your own house, but then I read what you said. So, uh, you know, we, yeah. we have actually quite a few uh, Model 3s in our village showing up. You've got a fair few z- um, zappies or um, Model 3s in your area then that you're always admiring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I I think, well, John is the only person I know with a zappy that I've seen, but I, I certainly yeah. can see loads of Model 3s. I'll, yeah, uh, I'll make sure to tag you next time I see a zappy around. But he, he's, God, yeah, yeah. he's he's got two zappies, and uh, I think he had to buy a second one uh, of eBay or something like that, uh, like the the the, the first the, the the first make, just to. to oh yeah, yeah, you one. Yeah, so so it matches his the other uh, the other one. Um, I don't know the whole story I behind it, it, but I call it the OG zappy, the original gangster. <laughs> 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 Thank you for uh, for appearing on on Techie TV. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. Um, thank you very much. All right. All Bye. right. Take care. Bye bye.